Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment in my Emacs for Writers series. In this video, we're going to learn about the Emacs frame and the difference between frames and windows and what's happening in your graphical user interface. It's going to be fun and instructional as we continue along with our journey into Emacs. So stay tuned. Before we get started, I'll mention that this educational video series is based on my Emacs for Writers handbook, which you can download as a PDF or EPUB ebook formatted file linked in the description below if you want to follow along with the text. I've also provided links where you can follow me on X and Facebook if you use those platforms, where I cross post video content and other content specifically for those platforms. So thank you. On with the video. Some key concepts in this video include frame versus window terminology, menu bar for graphical commands, toolbar with functional icons, window as the main canvas, mode line for buffer information, echo area or mini buffer for system feedback. So in Emacs, the terminology for windows is a little different than what you might be used to. In most desktop environments, you would refer to this floating object here as the window. But in Emacs, this is known as a frame. The window in Emacs is the editable text area that is displayed inside the frame here. It might seem arbitrary, but once you get used to this little distinction, you'll be able to read through the Emacs documentation and speak with other users, of course, without getting confused. And this is to be expected. Emacs is very old and therefore sort of idiosyncratic. But this is part of the fun of Emacs. The menu bar, like in other programs you may be more familiar with, gives you a place where you can select commands to run via a graphical drop-down window interface. Emacs has thousands of internal commands and functions that you can run either interactively or inside of other functions, including custom functions that you will write for yourself. Many Emacs users who favor minimalism will disable the menu bar and run commands interactively with the keyboard or on the fly, so to speak. It's your choice. For many years, I disabled my menu bar, but I brought it back recently because I have learned how to customize it by adding my own custom functions to these drop down menus. So it can definitely be useful if you prefer to have these drop down options available to you. The toolbar, seen right here, the toolbar also gives you the ability to run certain functions in the graphical interface. But instead of a drop down, of course, it uses icons. And like everything in Emacs, this toolbar can also be configured to run your own commands or be disabled entirely. Switching over from other applications, you might feel more comfortable leaving both the menu bar and the toolbar right where they are, but it's your choice. We'll see in a later video how you can configure your Emacs to turn these on and off if you choose. As I said before, the window is your main canvas for text manipulation. And there's not much else to say about the window, but I will demonstrate how you can split your windows. So you can split windows vertically and horizontally. This might help explain to you why Emacs makes a distinction between windows and frames. A single frame can hold as many windows as you want. So you see with a command, I've now split into two windows, one on top and one on bottom. Uh, of course, it's the same file, so you'll see the same text in both places. And uh, with a separate command, I can split uh, on, the, on the vertical as well. And of course, so you can switch between these, and each of these can be different files if you choose. So no matter how much you expand the windows, uh, you can actually be doing different work in different places and then if you want to focus on one window, you can jump into it and uh, create and destroy windows on the fly. And the mode line is this little gray strip toward the bottom of the window. It's used to display special information about the buffer you are in. Mainly, it can tell you what file your buffer is editing, what major mode you're in, and minor modes you currently have active. So you can see I'm in a text file, so I'm just basically in text mode. You see, that's the um, that's the major mode. But of course, if I was to enable uh, other minor modes, they'd be listed here as well. Emacs, of course, has many different editing modes. 
Uh, it has multiple programming modes. So there's different modes for Python or HTML or PHP or whatever you're coding in. Uh, as writers, you'll be spending most of your time in text modes. So there's basic text mode. There's also a markdown mode. There's org mode, which we'll be talking about in, uh, in more extensive detail later. And uh, there's also the minor modes that can be run within major modes to provide modified functionality in your buffer. So don't let it confuse you too much at this point. For now, just know that the mode line is where this information and uh, a lot of other information can be displayed as well. The only problem with the mode line is that it can uh, quickly run out of real estate as, um, as more information gets displayed down here. So uh, there are different ways to, um, to configure the mode line. You can remove or diminish certain bits of information that might be redundant. Uh, or you can actually completely rewrite the mode line to have it uh, do whatever you want. The echo area or the mini buffer is just beneath the mode line. You can see here it is at the bottom. It is basically like a mini buffer. So it's basically a place where system information can be uh, echoed back to you. You'll see various messages pop in there from time to time. For example, like saving a file will trigger a message. If a file is auto-saved, it'll tell you. The echo area is also used to, as a place to throw errors. So if you're coding an Emacs Lisp, um, every time I click it, it's opening up the messages buffer. That's a, like a printout of all the previous messages that have popped into the uh, mini buffer. So of course, that can also be helpful if you missed a message. Uh, but basically, they will pop in there. So for example, if I save this, you see it tells me it just wrote that file. So it puts that information in the mini buffer. So as we go on in the series, uh, you will see how all of these various graphical elements come together and how you can configure them for your own needs. That's it for this video. In the next unit, we'll take a look at Emacs key bindings and how those work so you can use more keyboard and less mouse. Increase your speed. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Be sure to like the video and subscribe and share this with someone you think might get some value out of it as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.